This is the 67th episode of Patterson in Pursuit. This week's interview comes from Panama City, Panama, where I had a conversation with a Catholic priest who's been practicing for 22 years. We talk about the basics of Catholicism, the purpose of the church, the necessity for faith, the status of the sacraments, what transubstantiation is all about, as well as several other topics. Catholicism is a very big deal in Latin America, so I want to figure out what it's all about. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Patterson in Pursuit. This week's episode is about a topic I know very little about, and that is Catholicism. I grew up in a Christian, evangelical, Protestant household and didn't learn very much about Catholicism, which means I'd like to start where I start every other topic, at the very basics. One of the things I want to do with the show is not just interview a bunch of academics. Worldviews exist outside of the academy, and I want to hear about them. Religious worldviews in particular are massively important in the world we live in. So I found too few people that'll just sit down and listen to what religious people or religious leaders have to say. Prior to any analysis or any judgment, you gotta sit down and listen to the ideas themselves. So that's why I'm excited to be able to talk to a practicing Catholic priest whose beliefs are obviously impactful on the lives of many of those in his congregation. I was in Panama City, Panama last month and was having a rather difficult time finding an English-speaking priest. But fortunately, since the Panamanian people are so nice, they went out of their way and led me down a series of phone calls and messages and I got a hold of Father Oscar Martin. He's an English-speaking priest who's been practicing for more than two decades. His church is called Christ the Redeemer in San Miguelito, which is a little ways outside of Panama City, and he kindly met up with me in the most peculiar of places. I couldn't find a place that had good audio quality. Things were either too echoey on the inside, or there was background noise, so I wound up going to the top of a rooftop that was about 20 stories up in the middle of Panama City, and I set up our little studio up there. So it's not incredible audio quality, and as you'll hear, the wind was occasionally pretty loud, but I admire Oscar's boldness in accepting an invitation to meet a perfect stranger on the top of a rooftop half an hour away to have a conversation about Catholicism. That sounds like it could be the beginning of some kind of crime horror movie. The sponsor of this episode is an app that my wife and I are using pretty much every day. It's called 10% Happier, Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics. And it's all about taking a rational approach to meditation. Before I had the conversations with both the Buddhists in Thailand and in Japan, I had a pretty skeptical view of meditation because most of the people that I had interacted with who were big on meditation were also kind of big on chakras and healing crystals, which I confess I don't have a particularly high opinion of. However, after I had those conversations and I had some dialogue with some of you guys, I realized, wow, there's actually a lot of meat to meditation. If you can cut through the metaphysical nonsense, there is a practice here that can be immensely valuable, and it has been in a fairly short amount of time for both me and my wife. So if you guys want to try it out, don't take my word for it. You can get a free month's trial at steve-patterson.com slash meditate. All right, so I hope you guys enjoy my conversation with the Panamanian priest, Father Oscar Martin. First of all, I want to thank you again for taking the time to come and speak with me. I know this was kind of spontaneous and we're talking on a rooftop, (laughs) not exactly an ordinary experience, but I really wanted to talk to a Catholic priest while I'm in Panama because Mm -hmm. Catholicism is so popular here. And it's kind of the theme of what I'm doing as I'm traveling. I just want to learn about basic ideas, basic religious ideas. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the basics of Catholicism and Christianity. Okay. So, so I come from the United States, okay. and uh, Protestant Christianity is fairly popular. It's kind of my my background, how I was raised. Fell away from it a little bit, but I'm I'm rediscovering religion, you might say. Okay. And so I'm trying to piece things together. So, just at a very basic level, what are some of the differences between evangelical Protestant Christianity and Catholicism? Okay. Well, when we have to talk about Christianity. Um, we need to understand that from the very beginning, um, the Catholic Church understands that the foundation of the Church 
is because Jesus Christ want a church. And when he started with his apostles to do work around the places where there was, they get like a custom, like a way of doing things. Mm -hmm. It's not like, no, we're going to start the church. No. Of his apostles that gathering mm -hmm. and doing what the Catholic Church used to do now. So from the very beginning, we was point on Peter, the apostles, like the head of the church and this group that Jesus Christ had. And he point him like the first one and the one who have to like direct things. So we follow that situations and that's why we have like an apostolic foundations. Mm. So when you have to talk about different groups of Catholic of Christians um, congregations, we usually not discuss doctrine but also follow that some congregations don't account the Pope like the one who they have to refer. Mm. Like each group um have their own leader and they just don't follow the guidance and the unity that just one leader like in the same in the case of Pope or Saint Peter or in, in our case Pope Francis guide us so he give us like this line that we understand we need to follow so we can become one church hmm. um, also, for other congregations, we understand that church not only have like an institution on earth, we also understand that church have like a divine situation. The same way Jesus, we understand Jesus is human and also divine, the church also have these situations. Hmm. That's why people can achieve salvation through the church. Hmm. How we achieve salvations? There is where each church try to say what a form or a way to get to salvation. But when you are in the Catholic Church, salvation comes through the sacraments that Jesus Christ, through his Holy Spirit, gives his apostles to administrate to people. And what are the sacraments? Oh, well, we have um seven sacraments but the problem is not what is the sacrament the problem is how many sacraments we have that is not the problem the problem is what is a sacrament right so we understand that e oh, everything we do is a communication situation the way you dress the way you talk you, the way you move you always do communicating things <laughs> So, signs, symbols, have to do with some characters or situations that have a reference with other things that you don't see in a, in a normal way. Hmm. Like, when you drive a car and you see the red light, you actually see it as a red light. But right. you know that that red light means something else. Right that is danger so you need to do something because you see that red light okay so when you're talking about a symbol it is almost the same thing but it's deeper because with a symbol like a flag you just see a piece of material with colors on it mm -hmm. that is it but when you understand what that kind of symbol mean you have to see also the people that related to a place mm -hmm. and also to that symbol so then you tend to treat the flag the material like if you treating a person mm. so you the same respect you give to other people is the same respect you give to their flag <laughs> <laughs> and it's a piece of cloth yes but it communicates something it means something okay so in the sacrament we have symbols and we have also signs that talk to us about God hmm. like in the case of the sacrament of the Eucharist we have this little bit of wine and this little piece of bread 
that when it consecrates, it becomes for us the body and blood of Christ that give us salvation. Mm. So this element became the presence of God. So the things that the food do to your normal body, through faith also do it to your spiritual body, hmm. the spiritual situation. So then I need to talk about why we understand that actually we have a different situation than our regular body. Hmm. And then I have to make the questions. Do you know people who live without legs? Yes. Do you know people <laughs> that live without their hands or arms? Uh -huh. And those people who lose their arm or their leg, they forget their name. They have to change something in their personality. No. They still be in there. They're still the same. The same. That's why we understand that some part is the body and some part is this other situation that human beings have that don't be affected by the body. Mm. So you eat food and you um, um, feel of energy in your body to do you normal process in your body. But also we understand that there is a soul. <laughs> Hmm. And this soul also is a living being, and it needs to be fed. Hmm. Hmm. So, if this soul is a spiritual being, it needs spiritual stuff. And there is where the sacrament, because this, the food, the meaning of the food, that gives you strength and make you um, able to do things with your normal body, also you need to feed hmm. your spiritual side. Okay, so let me try to summarize and rephrase that, and if I do it wrong, please correct me. So, there's a fundamental belief that there is, let's say, the soul and the body, or maybe the mind and the body. And just like the human body needs nourishment, the spiritual body needs nourishment. And so what the church is, is a way to administer food for the spiritual body. Is that fair? All, yes, it should be like that. Okay. But also, we're not only um, giving this um, food to the soul, because you, we understand that each soul, each person that is human and soul, have a mission. And the church is the place where people accomplish that mission. Hmm. Now, is that the church is the place where the people accomplish their mission if you are a priest in the church, or is, the, is that just for regular people? For everyone, because each, one of, each person that appears in this world have a mission. It's, we understand that God have a big plan, like a big project. Mm. So each one of us are here to accomplish that project. So how we accomplish that project? Through community. So we need so we understand that when Jesus appeared in this world, he didn't appear by himself. He appears in a family between the Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph. So in true community, he accomplished his progress because we understand that when he appeared, he he is God and all those things, but when he come here he came like a human being. So he need to grow, he need to learn, he need to be under the protection and direction of his parents. He need to grow in, in, in high and also in grace and all those things. He need to learn from others, he need to learn a job and know the values of living together and all those things. So we understand that through community, you learn and you grow and you fulfill. Like, when Jesus came to this world, he came like a little baby. He need from his parents all protection and care. But when he go out from this world, he went out like king of the universe, Lord, master of creation, alpha and omega. That is his title that when we celebrate at the end of the ordinary time. So, we call that progress. When you come like a little baby and you're depending on anyone, and you come out like a king. So, 
each person that appears in this world need to do this like path or way we understand that he came out like king of the universe lord of creation alpha and omega but after he passed away on the cross so if you want to be king you need to do the way of the cross mm. and the way of the cross have the three times he felt all the beatings all the humil humiliation the we call it the spine crown yeah the crown of thorns the wounds yeah. all the suffering so we understand that is you want to get to fulfillment if you want to get to omega you need to do some sacrifices hmm. and the place where you do those sacrifices is in the community hmm. what kind of sacrifices okay we're talking about love but when we have to talk about love I I just don't say it like that I just break it down in compassion hospitality and mercy and those three situations you need to suffer a little bit if you want to accomplish that in a community mm -hmm. that's why the man and the woman marry because this man have to practice hospitality compassion and mercy with his wife so he can get to fulfillment so he need to suffer a little bit and then the also the woman have to do the same thing so she can become the fulfill and get to the most better person that she can be and to do that she have to love how oh, being charitable being merciful be making the hospitality with you hmm. and then children appears <laughs> so parents can fulfill get to full men like the parents through practicing hospitality um, compassion and mercy with their kids mm. and the same mm. thing happened with the other people so when you are like single like or like me myself that's why you always need to be related to the community because I am not married to no one but I don't live alone I live in a community so mm. I, I get to practice hospitality compassion mm. and mercy with the, a lot of the people and the same thing happened with the others Okay, so let me try to uh, do the same thing I did last time. I'll, I'll try to put that into a nutshell, and if I make an error, please correct me. So the idea is the, this person of Jesus Christ started from being a baby in a manger, as the, the famous story goes, and then wound up master of the universe is the term that you used. And he, there's a certain process of going and getting to that final point, and the only way you can get there is by practicing love in a community. And that is what the church is supposed to do, is be the community for your love practice, uh -huh. essentially. That's right? Yes. And then, and not only that part, because we need to do the other part also. Because remember that we, when we do things, we do it in both ways. The human part of it, that show true love, mm and the divine part of it that become through salvation through the spirituality and through mm. the sacraments so so tell me again with the sacraments i i can definitely wrap my head around the idea of love as a spiritual practice in a community i totally get that but where does the can you what what are specifically the sacraments like what what are the what are they specifically, the rituals, or and, okay. and how do they play into the, the practice of love? Because we understand that God show us. Because in Catholic religion, it's not like we do things because we know them. We do these things because we understand there is a revelation. Mm. And like God in Jesus Christ person tell us of the existence of the Father 
and the existence of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. It's Jesus Christ who told us that because before Jesus Christ we didn't know these things. So we understand now that our God is a community hmm. with three persons and just one God. So there is a community. Okay. And so we understand that fulfillment is you want to be the best person you can be is through a community. And this community has to be with the conscience that Jesus Christ is present in the community. Mm. And that happened when or we understand that in several readings that we have in the Bible. Because, like I said, it's not like Jesus said, no one, there's the church. No. What was the experience? The experience is that after he died, three days passed. And then each time the apostles gather, then he appears. Hmm. So then he said, like, these three ladies went to the empty tomb. And when they come out, he appears to them. The other disciple was walking to another place, and he appears there too. Hmm. The other disciple was fishing on the shore, and then he appears. So, hmm. like we realize that when we gather, he appears, hmm. and that is how what we do. So <laughs> let me ask you one question right on that, because um, I'm trying to relate this to my own experience. Mm -hmm. And you know, a few years ago, I experienced what I would call true love, and my expanded my worldview, and I thought, okay. There's some truth in religion, and I gotta try to sort it out because this is really powerful. So when I think about when a community gathers, Jesus appears. Do you take that in a literal way that there's an actual person that is there, or something that I could I could kind of understand this? It's almost like when people are there, it's the opportunity for love, and when you experience the love, it is as if Jesus is there in person, or this loving. And then we yeah. have to go back to sacraments. Okay. <laughs> because like I said, when you see the flag, or you see like Panamanian flag, the flag, Panamanian flag represent like four million persons. Mm -hmm. So you believe that? No. <laughs> but for the people that are related right. to that flag, Yes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, like I said, um, symbols have that F effect mm -hmm. because it's the same thing with the United States flag mm -hmm. because that flag is related so, for so many people. Mm -hmm. I am not seeing the people. I see the flag. Mm. Now, so but the presence of that flag mm -hmm. have the effect, the same effect, like is the presence of the people. Is that the so, same? Is, is Jesus in that context? Is Jesus like the flag? No. No. When we're talking about sacrament, mm -hmm. and you ask me, is Jesus like the bread and wine? <laughs> and I have to say yes, because he become bread and wine after consecration that become flesh and blood. And like the nutri nutritionist says, you are what you eat. So it's you eating Jesus Christ, you become Jesus Christ. Literally. Yes. That and one's that, hard to... and that is what and that <laughs> is why we have to talk about sacraments. Because is I disrespect the flag, it's like I am disrespecting the people. Mm -hmm. For the same thing happened with the sacrament. Is I disrespect the sacrament, I also disrespect in God. Mm. So for so I wonder in this, how much of the sacraments or maybe Christianity or Catholicism in general do you take allegorically or in a non literal way versus how much do you say literally when you eat the bread, it is literally the flesh of Jesus. Is there, or is it, is it all literal, or do you, is there a line? We are understanding that this is literal. Mm. Is we it all of it? It's all of it. Okay. Because we says, we understand that Jesus is complete in each situation, like in his blood, like in his flesh. That's why we can have communion both by the 
both ways with the blood and the flesh or just only with the flesh and we also having Jesus complete mm -hmm. but the thing is that this is the part that have to do with the faith mm -hmm. because it's like when you sit down and eat with someone you just keep in silence me? Well, it depends on how good the food is. If it's really good, I'm going to be busy eating. But <laughs> when, when you all sit down with your brother or maybe some people around you and you sit down and eat, you we just talk. eat? We talk. About what? Anything, really. Well, about your life, your yeah. situations, and other people's life also. So actually, what it means is when you sit down and eat with someone, you're telling that other person, I really like to be here mm. and I like to share my life with you and also I want to know about your life mm. so it's not only like we eating we, we are also sharing mm. our life together mm. so the same thing happened with the sacrament literally <laughs> because you're not only sharing Jesus Christ's body and blood you're also sharing the life of the people that are around you and mm. there is community mm. so if I were to say something like when I eat as I've been visiting Panama with my brother we've had a few mm. meals I could say something like we've shared part of our lives I think that's very nice I haven't thought of it that way but that's nice but I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that the food that I'm eating is anything other than the food that I'm eating. So it's not that the food is lit literally becomes flesh. It is, it, or it, in the in the Christian context, it's it's like a it's a way of talking. So if I were to say, you know, you and I were going to have um, bread and wine, and if we were to share, uh, we were to share love with each other and community, it is as if we're sharing the Jesus mindset or the Jesus person, whatever whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Why, what what more power is there in that explanation when we say, in addition to sharing that, we're also sharing literal flesh and literal blood? Because, and, and this is the part where you need to, to take hand of your faith. Mm -hmm. Because, like, for us, this part is tradition. Mm -hmm. and, and why tradition? Because we understand in the martyrs' experience and the saints' experience that they die and they was able to split their blood. Um, um, repeating this truth and mm. believing this truth that I am I'm sharing with you today. Um, like I said, we understand that person the people are just only flesh. We mm. understand that there's other situations that is not material, but there is, is the air. Mm -hmm. So there is a new situation and a new world that have their own rules and they move their own way. Mm -hmm. Like when we said like in the marriage, in the sacrament of marriage, that how these two persons that come in the church, there are two persons. And then when they go in out in marriage, they become just one. Mm. The same way we understand that G that God is three persons, one God. Mm. These people are two flesh, but just what these two persons, but they become one flesh. Mm. So each sacrament talk to us about God and His His essence, mm. like His situation, like His reality. Mm. So let me ask you then about um, faith and the role of church here, because um, I don't have much knowledge or exposure to Catholicism. And when I think of churches in general, I think of, I guess, evangelizing or trying to convert people, something like that. But what I've gathered in my conversations with um, people who are in various churches is it's not really that. It's more like what you're describing as a place for people who already believe to practice, to get together in community. Is that, is that, a, a, would that be a correct way to think about the Catholic Church in general? Is yes, there is, there is, there are missionaries, yes. but really 
most of it is for people who already believe to, to practice and have that community. Well, um, we need to understand that church is a very old institution. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's passed through so many historical situations mm. that have to do with the places where the church grow. Mm. So each place have their own situation. So what I'm going to say now, it, the experience that we have and where I grow, because my experience is from someone that came from Adventist church mm. and passed to the Catholic church. So for me, it's not like a tradition that because my great grandmother carried me to the church each day and I am here. No, I, I have to study a lot <laughs> <laughs> and then understand what is going on to then become Catholic. Mm. And why I understand that um, there are some facts and things that you don't have, you can't explain about it. And that's why I said we have to relate to the faith. Mm. And faith is something that I can give you because I am talking. It's something that God has to put in your heart. Mm. And then you believe in, it, in what he's saying. Like when I said each person need to do the way of the cross in their life, they have to find the moment when they was empty and they have to find the moment when they have to fight and how God have to put the hand on him so they can get to die in their situation and then fulfill hmm. at the end. Because actually you need to grow like a person and how we grow through love, through doing sacrifices for others. Because like when the reading we have today, if you um, want to protect your life, you will lose it. And when you lose your life for he, you will gain it. Mm. So, like I said, this is a faith situation. Mm. But when you are in the community and also in the church, you also see what God do with other persons. Because then you will can ask the others why you do this why you are here why why you spend your life this way when you can be doing another thing mm. and they will explain that they have an God experience and from that moment they become a spiritual person mm. it's not because the priest talked to them or sometimes yes they saw God talk to them through other persons God have their own way to do things. Hmm. But the, the thing is that for us, church, like I said, is a place where you achieve salvation through a practice hmm. of love, but like I said, hospitality, hmm. compassion, and mercy. So if somebody, let's say, either doesn't have access to a literal Catholic church family community, can you still have the same practice of love just with no formal connection, let's say, to the church? Okay. Well, you can have a community, a beautiful one. Because when people gather and be true and be careful for each other, we call that also family. Mm -hmm. And if you have a place where you can go and people where you can practice love with them that is a blessing mm. and you need to take care of it mm -hmm. but when we need to talk about salvation when we need to talk about fulfillment when you need to talk about being better being the best person you can be that is the we understand that that thing that situation we just get it with Jesus Christ mm. through the church uh, Jesus Christ through the church meaning through the formal church, through the oh, yes. with the the Pope and the uh, the, the formal. well, well, well. We need we need we need to make the difference, like we said at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We understand that church have the same situation like Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ, we understand that He is divine because He's God, but also He is human mm -hmm. because He have to do all the things the human way to do mm -hmm. things. So that is the way He chose us to do things, and that's why church. Yes, it's human. That's why the human way to do things is through a structure. Mm. Because 
in any community when human beings gather they don't gather any they don't just gather just everybody like a cloud without a head <laughs> in all the places you go naturally there's someone who have to put things straight hmm. I like to explain this the, the, the center went through family because usually no one want to wash the dishes <laughs> no one want to take out the trash no one want to clean the toilet usually someone have to put the ugly face <laughs> <laughs> because if you don't clean the dishes you don't take out the trash you don't do the the, the, the toilet someone can live in that house no so we actually need someone who put the ugly face so things get done so everyone can live here mm. and that's why we need a head so the pope is putting the ugly face on oh yes <laughs> yes yes because <laughs> someone can have this good idea and come up with so many things and then each one have the same authority mm. and now for me i i struggle with this when i'm thinking about structure not just in religion, but also in government, in family, in society. What I have seen is, I guess you could call it corruption in all these structures. Wherever you have hierarchy, it seems like the humans who are higher up in the hierarchy so frequently abuse their authority. And yes, you yes. lose, and there's plenty of examples of that yes. in every structure. So how do you, how do you maintain a kind of respect and trust that in the hierarchy, as you go higher up the hierarchy, people are honest and they want your best interest in mind. Like the, the you know, the, maybe the, the head of the household saying, you've got to do the dishes. You know, they put on the angry face because really it's better for the whole family. Why, how do you stay trusting that that's the same thing going on in the church? That's why we understand that the doctrine of the church give us the guidance. And then, well, you need also to know about history because in human being history only when you have like a checklist of things if the moment you get to grow how the little kids can accomplish their works because they don't know so then someone have to put like a structure Mm. This time we do this, the other time we do that, at this moment we go to sleep and the other moment we need to go to eat and someone have to do the 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 structure so so they can record what they do it and actually know what they do bad so they can do it better the next time mm. and the things that they are doing good they also can and doing better. So and we see that through the church. No, we understand also that we are human beings. And like I said, each church depend on the place and also depend on the people. Because all the powerful of God become human. And like go through human ways. So we understand because I know people are fragile, but we understand that the church survived 22, no, 21 centuries because the God is with us, because the Holy Spirit somehow put things together. Maybe like the tale says, right straight with, um, recall, um, inclined bars or something. <laughs> Um, God put the church in a certain path so we need to do things and also accomplish the way of the cross because you could say oh no the church is just all powerful all rich and whatever but no each person have to do their own cross way to mm. get to fulfill them mm. even the Pope but we understand that to accomplish we need to voluntarily and freely suffer for others mm. and that's why we voluntarily accept Pope's guidance and doctrine 
It's like I ask the little kids, why you take care of what your mom says? Because she suffer for you, taking care of, of your things in one moment of your life. Mm. So, so is the church. So, when first people start to behave like a community, who is the way of the community? Practicing hospitality, charity, uh, mercy, and compassion with each other. Then you understand why this work and the others and the other system don't work. Because usually when you have these higher high people with positions and stuff, you just have to ask about compassion, mercy, hospitality, or really you, you are talking about power. Mm. And that's why I think Pope Francis is so popular now. Because he's showing now the face of the church that Jesus Christ, full of mercy, had. But like I said, we have to come up with an history and each person with each situation. Mm. So now is the moment of the mercy, and he's showing a lot of mercy, and he's putting the church in a path of mercy. Even if we know that we need to accomplish legal stuff, economic situations, social situations, and all those things, but if we want to fulfill and do the job Jesus Christ has for the church, that is through mercy, compassion, and hospitality. It's not mm. the other way. So when you see the church structure, when you are looking, let's say, up the ranks, if you will, you don't necessarily see power per se. You see, what do you see? Do you see, um, like, earned authority? Is, is there a difference between power and authority? Okay, the thing is that, look, um, some people say, why the Pope don't sell all those things he have in the Vatican because that costs a lot of money, mm. perhaps. Sure. But the thing is that don't, that, that don't belong to him. That belongs to the humanity. And when he sells that, like, to you, you will take that and put it in your house. So who will get to see it? Just your family or the people that related to you. Mm. But when he, are, when he leave it where it is right now, everyone can go and look at it. Everyone can ask about history. It's like, um, when... When I am um, in a church I was before, I, I have to go several times to Rome. And I always bought these little um, souvenirs they have. Because the people that don't get to go to the Vatican, they saw these little things in the pastoral halls and asked me, what is this? <laughs> and that is an opportunity to talk about the church history. Mm. And if he sell it, then it will not be a dear anymore. And then humanity lose, like so many things that culturally should be for the people, and now they are in private collection that no one can see. Mm. So let me ask you one more question. It's kind of a big topic, and it's another difficult one that I'm trying to wrap my head around. And that is, I guess, the starting point of religious faith. Mm -hmm. That's come up a lot in the course of this conversation. And if somebody... So there's, there's two groups of people that I think this should be directed at. One is those who have had experiences in their life that they would call religious or spiritual experiences. I'd be one of those. This was several years ago, like I said, when I encountered true love with my wife, I would call that some kind of religious experience or spiritual experience that needs explanation. And there's another large group of people who have never had those type of experiences. Maybe even, at least in the United States, I'd say the majority of people have not had those type of experiences. So when somebody has had a profound feeling of love or maybe some, in some way they interpret their experience as having some contact with God in some limited sense, it makes more sense to me how faith can be 
accepted. It's like, okay, I don't really fully grasp everything that's going on here, but I'm going to kind of trust that this is all sorted out, and that's why I'm going to have faith. But for those people that haven't had any religious experience, how can they understand faith? Or how, is there any argument or any okay. thing that will bring somebody to that position? Of okay. Being, yeah. um, um, okay. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas says that people can get to know God through faith, through reason mm. and through beauty. Mm. So you need to have like sense. <laughs> and I said common sense. <laughs> when you see what is going on outside of you, like the wise man experience. The wise man experience is somehow in the Old Testament, someone that come up, up here and stand like at the border, look at 360 turn and ask himself, who set order in all this thing? Hmm. Who put the order? Because you know that order not become by itself. It's not that things clean by themselves. Someone have to do it. And then when you stand, who says that that hill should be that part over there and the water should be that side and the clouds should be on top and the skies and the other place? Who did that? Because you know that things don't happen because they happen. No? Mm. Someone have to do it. Who says that the moon um, hit this, the, the earth and stabilized the orbit and slowed down the move? To me, it's somebody making cake. <laughs> because why they put the moon in the moment they have to put it, and they didn't put it before. Mm. The same way why you put the vanilla in this moment and don't put it before you put the sugar. Mm -hmm. So it's like an experience of common sense. But the thing is that people in their education and the, all the the advertisement and the noise that we are within in, in these days don't stop and think about this thing. Or normal environment is I have to go to work because I need money because I have to do things. And this thing that I have to do, I need to do it with money, so I have to do whatever I need to do for the money. And then you don't think that in some point in your life don't have hands, you will don't have legs, and you will be still be there. So tell me with which hand you will count the money. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just involve your life because you you get you like to have so many shoes. But there is a moment where you're going to lose your legs, but you will be, still be there. <laughs> with feet you're going to put those shoes. <laughs> And that's why I said this is common sense. And sometimes people just live in so fast, mm. they don't stop and have the experience of the wise man. Okay, so you'd say that reason, I, I like this part especially, the, the idea that reason can lead you to some kind of belief in God. Oh, I think yes. you believe that. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Now, and I, I tend to agree for one particular reason about uh, the infinite regress, the, the old argument, the cosmological argument. I think that's, there's something like a first cause. Yes. I, I think that's a powerful argument. But there's a big jump between, let's say, arguments for deism, the idea that there's a there's a creator, there's a structure to the universe, there's a first cause maybe, to go from, okay, I think that's a reasonable position, there's a creative force, okay, I'll accept that too, any one of the religions, major religions. So to go from, okay, I believe there's a God and there's a creator too, and it was Jesus Christ who lived and died and was God and set up the church and all these things, how do you get to, how do you go from A to B? Okay, like I said, um, all religion is a revelation. And who revealed it? Well, the same Jesus. 
because we understand that God himself come to earth, incarnate, and talk to us about his presence, his mission, or, or meaning to be here. And Jesus' life tell us, through his life, he tell us what should be human being life. Like, Jesus, like a human, teaches us how to be the better human we can be. Mm. So because of what he was saying, so when you read the words of Jesus, you think he was God because you think what he said is true, or you think he was God because he said he was God? Okay, because he not only saying, he do so many signs that communicate God's presence mm. and accomplish things that there was writing from way before he was appears here. Mm. So the, the fulfillment of prophecy, you'd say. Yes, I yes, see. yes, yes. So in order to... So if somebody were to say, okay, I'm at the deistic perspective, I believe there's a God, I don't know about this Jesus, I don't, I'm not sure... It takes a measure of faith, I think, to believe that the, that that a particular set of prophecies were fulfilled or that Jesus turned water into wine. So doesn't that still take some kind of faith to get you to the belief in Jesus? But faith is reasonable. Is what? Reasonable. <laughs> there is um, the reason. Oh, reason. Can... Uh, can uh, Reasonable? Reasonable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very hard word. <laughs> okay. To, to believe that things that are situations that not only material have to do with the power, the intention of things. And there is a reason why some guy come and tell... 10 million person I am the son of God and you need to do what I have to, what I tell you to do and that and that war for the Egyptian Pharaoh mm. so it's not like something crazy but the crazy part here is why we believe in the powerful man that have the weapons and do stuff then I follow this guy and then the other guy that dead in the cross that show love and then things the peaceful way don't <laughs> and that's why sometimes reason need to have faith in a different way mm. to do things there is a doctrine yes and sometimes school just taught us to look in the box. Mm. And then faith, opportunity, history, whatever, tell you you need to come out that box and have bigger pictures, periods. Mm. Because we understand that everything is related. And then now the people of reason get into that experience because they no understand that the same water that are here are in the other planets. <laughs> and also through your blood, um, through your vessels, it's the same water. The iron that we have in here is the same iron doctors give you when you are anemic. So there's a relation with everything that it is get done. So we need to be, we won't believe that the same one who did the universe did the same one who did us mm. and give us intelligence to understand. So, so the, yes, I think it's reasonable. I think it is reasonable, and I, I still struggle. So, I wonder what you think about this. <clears throat> I'm trying to piece together a, a philosophy, a worldview that it just explains my experiences mm -hmm. and that incorporates everything from beliefs about logic and knowledge and physics all the way to trying to explain my love experience and mm -hmm. the all theological things and so i get to the point where i think there i think you can make a reasonable argument for the existence of god the uniformity of of 
of the universe is an interesting one. That the iron here is the iron over there. Maybe that means they're the same creator. That's interesting. I haven't heard of that one before. Um, and when I read specifically the words of Jesus in the Bible, maybe not a lot of the other stuff in the Bible, but specifically the words of Jesus, the way that he's talking about love, that resonates with me or something. It, it, it makes sense to me, and it's very, very powerful and very, very insightful. I think a lot of people have that experience. So I might even say something like, you know, I am a, a Jesusist or a Jesus follower. I think he's onto something really powerful. But even then, there's a big gap between believing that Jesus was onto something and getting to faith. And and because I don't, I wouldn't even say I really have faith, and yet I have some belief in the spirituality of love and like mm. the, the truth of love, maybe. So, is there? If, if somebody were to say, the reason that you have faith in the church or in Catholicism is just because you have faith. It's the reason you have faith is because of faith. It's not for a reason. How do you respond to that? Because I know you've well, got in reasons. In my case, yeah. because I read a lot, I study <laughs> a lot, because, like I said, when I start my journey in the Catholic Church, I wasn't a Catholic. I was an Adventist. Mm. But the thing is that I like to sing. Mm. And for, like a passion. So one time, because of the situation, this Catholic girl invited me to sing in the church. And for me, it was just going to sing. I, it's not like I believe what the priest is doing or whatever. And that was my first contact with the church. Then I get to make questions and find encyclopedias <laughs> that can count the history of what we, we, the church is. And not just one encyclopedia. I just get several of them. Hmm because I like to read a lot. And then I get to talk to people and do well, do community. Mm. So it's not just only study. You also have to be in the community and mm. have the experience mm. of what love is, mm. or what, what, what God means you that you can be the person you want to be because God put you here for a reason. Mm. And that reason is that you must fulfill. And that, is, and, and that was the very part that actually put me in the priesthood spot. Mm. Because before I want to become a priest, I was going, I want to build computers. <laughs> that's that what I was studying in university. Mm. But then I get to give a, a teaching about professional work and personal fulfillment. Mm. And then you understand that there's people that work without get paid for something. Mm -hmm. Because they understand that they become a better person mm. when they give mm. something they think there's their talent. And that's why I am in this path now because I understand that I suck, do suck so many sacrifices in my life to be in the church and do things for the church. And that is a community experience mm. because you need to be in, uh, with other people that actually need you so you can evolve and feel happy with what you actually doing. Mm. And that is responding to the calling that God give you. That's why you marry. Because in some hope, you do sacrifices for the other person you are married with. It's not that she have to pay you. You do it because you feel like you want to do it. That's why the marriage is not what you can give me, it's what, what I want to share with the other person. Mm. So when the arguing coming, you don't understand me. You don't pass time with me. You don't. It's not. That's not the argument. The argument is, I do this for you, 
and I do the other things for you, and I will going to do the other things for you, and not like I expecting you to pay me. It's because I want to give you all my life. Because I love you. Yes, mm. and that makes mm. you a better person. Because you share what you have without getting paid for it. Well, that's an excellent note to end this on. That's a, that's a high note. I really appreciate your time. Uh, this has been an excellent conversation. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, that was my conversation with Father Oscar Martin. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I intend to have many more of these types of conversations because obviously we just barely scratched the surface here. There's so many topics that were brought up, things that I would love to spend time diving into. Too many intellectuals dismiss ideas before listening to them. They are quick to mock, but not quick to listen. Instead of mockery and dismissal, I recommend letting the ideas speak for themselves. Your emotional reaction to ideas you disagree with will not persuade, but your exposition and reasonable, honest analysis of ideas you disagree with might actually persuade. So needless to say, I've got lots more to say on the topic. Can't wait to do an interview breakdown of this episode. And don't forget to tune in next week where I've got an amazing conversation with Lynn Ulbricht, who is the mother of Ross Ulbricht, the man who's currently in prison for creating the dark web marketplace, The Silk Road. If you've heard about what I'm talking about through the media, then you are guaranteed to be explicitly misinformed. The case is a miscarriage of justice, and trust me, you don't want to miss the details about it. So that's all for me today. You guys have a great week.